how are you, bro? Outside of what's going on with your fiance, like, how are you? Are you in good spirits? I hope so. Shoot, to be honest with you, man, I, I've been having my doubts for the past few days, just with everything that's been going on and also um, personal challenges that I've been going through. And, you know, <clears throat> I'm not going to lie to you, it does get hard at days, you know, despite me having this persona online or me just being positive, making motivational memes, making motivational videos here and there and doing YouTube and doing everything. I'm just like, you know, every other soul that's in the 3D world that's trying their best to keep themselves in high spirits and keep their vibrations high despite being in an environment that's like less than ideal. I'm not saying that I'm in the worst environment because, you know, there's people in worse situations than I am right now because yeah. I still feel privileged and I still feel um, blessed to be able to do what I do and to be alive, but it's like, any any person that's like healthy and you know they're t tuned in and tapped in spiritually and they're not spiritually bypassing how they feel they feel the energy but it's just like you know with that being said i've been doing my best to transmute all of the negativity that has transpired thus far with the pandemic the riots and all this other yeah. chaos going on you know i've just been really doing what I can on my end to keep myself yeah. together because I know at the end of the day, it's not up to anybody else to make me feel better. It's not up to the world. It's not up to my family. It's not up to you. It's not up to anybody that's watching this live on a replay. It's up to me. So, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say that and get that out the way. Yeah, man. I mean, I, de I, I definitely feel you. Um, and I'm guilty of having my uh, my super man armor on a lot of times. And what I have found is um, to kind of get myself back on track of, of being positive, I usually just just disconnect from everyone for at least an hour. I, I just, I go for a walk, I may work out or whatever. Because um, I know it's depressing to look at that shit every day. Like as every time yeah. you turn on the news, they're talking about it again and again and again. And it's like, I, I understand that they want us to um, recognize the importance of it. And I get that. But when you're looking at it every day, like I, I do feel like it starts to eat away at your soul a little bit, you know, because you're constantly being fed destruction and chaos like every day, you know? So I, I definitely dedicate time, at least an hour, if not two, to just go for a walk, man, and just keep my mind present and not focused on like what's going on with the coronavirus and um, this quarantine, which could be stressful on people within itself, you know? So I just, I try to get out as much as I can, man, and just disconnect and just leave my phone at home at least for an hour or no social media for an hour or two and just, and just connect with nature. That's really what I've been on um because of the quarantine you know and it's really allowed me to get more focused and more connected with my higher self you know and just and just write and just do the podcasting and just motivate other people you know and just keeping my energy high especially when we're in a low vibration yeah exactly man and you know another thing that i haven't told anybody about that i've just been working on because you know, with me, I like to keep my creative project on a low low until I'm complete or near completion because I find that, you know, a lot of times when you keep telling people about what you're currently working on, what you're going to do, it distracts you from actually doing the damn thing. And I've experienced mm. both spectrums where, you know, I'm a person that likes to talk a lot. I'm a big talker, <laughs> you know. I, I am. I'm, I'm just being real with you, man. I love to talk. Of course. I am like you to talk. I've been like that since I was a little kid. Well, I'm not really little because I've always been tall. Like, freak, in the third grade, I was like 5'3". <laughs> in the third grade, man. So, you know, I stood out amongst my peers, literally and metaphorically. But yeah. Anyways, you know, I've been working on an audiobook version for my book called Confessions of a Divine Masculine. I just recorded all five chapters, and I'm in the process of uh, mixing and mastering 
all of my chapters so I can have it prepped to be released. I want to make sure that the audio book is a positive experience for you to listen to. And I'm not going to lie, I thought recording audio books was the easiest thing in the world. You just cut on the mic and you just start reading words on a page, but it yeah. turns out it's like running a triple marathon is what somebody commented <laughs> in my post that I made yesterday when I asked, like, has anybody recorded audio books before? Because I was looking for advice and guidance on how to do it properly, because I believe in doing things the right way as opposed to just releasing crap. You know, yeah, and so like somebody gave me this long-winded um comment on my post, and they said that it's like running a triple marathon. I was like, yeah, that's true, because I fumbled over a couple of words and sentences multiple times as I was like recording in the DAW that I'm using, yeah. and I was just like, and then I would get frustrated. Like, I, of course, I'm not gonna have that on the final recordings, but I'm just yeah, la 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 la, damn. <laughs> all this stuff because I'm following over my sentences but that's all a part of the um, growth process and you know another thing that I wanted to speak on while we're having this conversation is that you know we're all privileged at the end of the day and the reason why I say that is because the amount of opportunity we have and yes you know there's this movement with Black Lives Matter and you know people protesting and I'm just sitting here like what is that doing for you personally? Like, why are you still trying to force somebody else to accept you? Why are you still putting your power in somebody else's hands? Why are you saying that a white person is privileged? Because the fact of the matter is, David, yeah. you know, we're privileged just by us being here and us doing what we do. In fact, we're talking yeah. about freedom as we speak on this episode. Absolutely. People that want to say that we're oppressed and that we're victims. Now, I want to say this also is that I've never experienced racism. I've never experienced police brutality. I've never been harassed by the cops. I've never experienced problems with anybody of a lighter shade than me. In fact, yeah. most of my supporters are white. As I was looking through my data and my past videos, people who bought my merch, people who have bought some items that I sold on this platform called Mercari. You know, I've sold a few yeah. books. So <laughs> it's nice, like, I've, just been, I've been trying to like find creative ways to keep myself in high spirits. And I realized that, you know, as I keep going on my spiritual path, the more I realize just how free we want to be. And we don't have to live in this so-called oppression. We don't have to suppress ourselves. We don't have to keep on playing into this narrative that we're victims. Because the um, right. fact of the matter is, we're not, not victims, bro. Yeah. And that's the Absolutely, problem with man. a lot of us. What do you have to say about that? I mean, I definitely agree, bro. You know, and that's why, um, <laughs> that's why I dropped uh, the stories uh, on my podcast that I dropped. You know, because. I feel like when you're when you're in business in any type of business whether you write whether you whether you have do film or video or whatever you do like I feel like people have this thing where you're supposed to take it like ultra 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 like serious and you don't you, you don't you have to take you, they expect you to have your girl face on like all the time and it's like I mean I get that you got to be passionate and serious about what you're doing but I find I get my best results, man, when I'm just having fun with what I'm doing. Like when I don't plan anything, when I just am spontaneous about it and I could rec um, record an episode on my podcast or write in my current book that I'm working on, like at any time, that's when I get the best results. I don't get results when I'm like super duper serious about it and I don't smile, I don't laugh, I don't take no jokes or nothing. Like, <laughs> And when I'm just allowed to be free with what I'm doing, that's when I get results. And that's when people are able to relate to what I'm talking about. But when I'm trying to be super serious and all of that stuff, I don't get no results. So I've learned to just, going back to what we was talking about, about being free, I've learned to just be vocally free and not feel like I have to... Um, 
like I had said on Facebook, watch what I say, watch what I'm doing, watch where I'm That's going, it, watch who sees it, watch who sees this, watch who sees that. And I just, I got sick of it, man. I, I did, you know, and that's why I just, I love what I'm doing. I do. I found my little, uh, as they say, our niches. I found my niche and I'm just, it lets me be as vocal as I could be, you know, and that's just something that I just encourage other people to experience, whether it's through Anchor, whether you write, whether you do film, whether you do video, whether you, whatever you do, just be as vocal as you can be. Just, just, yeah, and that's yeah. really what I've been pushing lately, man. That, that. So I love freedom. I do. I love the the concept of freedom. That's one of my yeah. passions now. Yeah, I also want to segue into that. You know, I've always had family members that follow me on social media that says, "Why are you posting this? Why are you posting that? You shouldn't be doing yeah. all that cussing on social media. You shouldn't be posting this, posting that." And after a while, David, just two years ago. I remember sitting mm -hmm. in the car as I was heading back to Lamar University. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to block all my family members, man. <laughs> I'm tired of them trying to cancel me and tell me what I can and can't say. And I was tired of being suppressed. And I said, just right. fuck it. Like, I'm just going to, you know, have people on my friends list that actually fuck with me and actually love yeah. me for me, not trying to get me to suppress what I want to say because I've always experienced that since I was a little kid that whenever I say it was yeah. on my mind I would get hit in the mouth I would get told that you shouldn't be saying that you should be seen and not heard I'm like look I'm literally a big dude I'm 6'4 so that literally <laughs> means I'm meant to take up space so it was like the universe was just like being funny yeah saying like okay you know you're going to stand out. You're going to stand out either way. You can't play small, dude, because you're, yeah, you're going to be right. six foot four. People going to spot you from a mile away. And right. so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to embrace it. That I'm like the big guy in the room until somebody that's like six, five and above walking yeah. next to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like there was this one 15 year old when I was working at the University of Houston for the summer as a conference assistant. He was 15 years old, and he was 6'10". I'm like, what in the hell? You're 6'10 at 15 years old. And Yo, that it, it's, it's just amazing to me. So, you know, with that being said, man, you know, we, we're meant to be free. We exactly. don't have to keep perpetuating the story of slavery. We don't have to keep playing that same record over and over and over again. We have to scratch that record on <laughs> Get that out of here. And put in a new record called Freedom Rings, Freedom Rings. I'm free to do what I want. Exactly. I'm a master manifester. And I am no lesser than you. Exactly. I don't know. I just came up with that on the spot, man. That's just my poet side. Yo, you better co listen. Look, you better copyright that. Make sure nobody takes it. You better copyright that because that was gold. That was gold, bro. <laughs> Look, um, look, an original is always worth more than a copy. So even if somebody does try to take it, they, they won't have the same matter to play to it. So I'm not even worried sure. about people taking my stuff. That's real, man. That's real. Um, I could definitely relate to being suppressed, man. And, and I think that's why now, even though I looked at it as, as a curse back then, um, I look at it as a blessing now. Because if I wasn't if I wasn't suppressed at that time, I don't think I would have the ideas that I have now because I would have already used them. And I think what I did was I made a mental note of who to share them with and who to keep them from. And I just kept them in the back of my brain until I got away from those people. And now that those people are not around, I have free reign to do what I want to do. I have free reign to write as many books as I want to write. I could record as, as many podcasts as I want to record. So I don't have any restrictions now. And I think that um, going back to being suppressed, I think that if I had used that energy back then, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I wouldn't be meeting the people that I've met. You know what I'm saying? And I think, unfortunately, um, for many of us, Support doesn't come from family members. It comes from strangers. It's a harsh truth, Always. but but 
is something that I've just learned to accept. You know, it it um it definitely hurt a little bit. And being a family man myself, it definitely does hurt a little bit when your family doesn't rock with you the way that you want them to. I feel that it does hurt a little bit. But how do you feel about the whole family thing? I know you had kind of touched on it, but how do you feel about family not really supporting what you're doing? Does it not bother you? Do you not worry about it? I mean, it, it used to bother me a lot um, back then because I'm like, y'all say y'all my ride or die. Y'all say y'all rock with me. Y'all say y'all support me. But every time, you know, I told y'all my business ideas or my movie career, they just didn't seem to give a shit. And that, yeah. that took, I took that real personal. And let me tell you something, David. So I remember mm -hmm. I was sick. I was like headed to like Memorial City Mall. And my mom was like, you know, you was like for your hair appointment, right? I was like, mom, I told you specifically, I have a scene <laughs> that I'm filming at the park. Because at the time yeah. I was working on The Dangerous Woman, which looking back, I should have just scrapped that whole project because it bought me so much pain and misery. But I'm going to get deep into that later um, sure. as we go on have time. But, you know, I remember like just that day, you know, I told her that and she's and you know what she told me, David, brace yourself. So she said, I don't give a fuck about your movie. Bro, and that's what she said? Yes, exactly. Those are my exact words. I'm not bullshitting you. You know? Wow. And I sat, I sat there and I was just, I was just like looking like this, just like pissed off. But I didn't want to yell and I didn't want to act on these violent impulses that I had. And so I was, I was just like, and you say you support me and you say that you want me to succeed, but yet mm -hmm. every time I try to succeed, you try to stop me. And I'm like, right. and I, and I, and that just rubbed me the wrong way forever. And yeah. I, I just didn't look at her the same that day. And I was like, yeah, man, this, this is, this is not great. But I know at the end of the day that my career is my career and my life is my life. You know, I can't, I can't ask for her support because she literally gave up on her dreams. You know, I'm gonna spill the beans. You know, not yeah. trying to be on some petty shit, but you know, it is what it is. You know, she, she said that she wanted to be a model when she was like younger, but then her, mm -hmm. my granddad talked her out of it, said you better go with, better go with your real job. And see, we're gonna get to that in a minute. I'm gonna let you finish. We're gonna get to that whole real job thing because I have a problem with those words, but I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> hey, uh, anyways, all love, bro. But, um, like, you know, she gave up on a dream because she didn't, she wasn't strong enough, and she subconsciously started falling in line with just getting a normal job and seeing how my mom ended up. I have a higher reasoning as to why she couldn't support. Where I want to support it. it doesn't excuse what she said to me. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's like she's not at a place to where she can support me the way I need her to because, you know, she's operating off of old programming and I can't take it personal anymore. And I've long since healed from that, David. It doesn't hurt me anymore. Yeah. But at the time, it really did hurt me badly. But now it's just like it is what it is. I have to stay focused on me and what I have going on for me and not you know, worried about family members not supporting me and trying to get me to give up on my dream. And I'm like, no, you know, it's my life. Yeah. Even though I still live with my folks now, it doesn't mean I'm just sitting here feeling sorry for myself. Like I'm, I'm, I'm literally working on, you know, getting up out of here, dude, because it's like, no one can yeah. live my life for me. No one, no one's going to help me out. Like I'm going to help me out. And so it's just been less in, the same lesson in self-reliance you know what I mean? yeah yeah um i definitely feel you on that man because I, I i had a similar experience um i had one of my mother's uh roommates or friends uh when i first started entertaining the idea of writing books um i had her tell me that nobody cares i had her tell me that nobody really is going to read what i write about um and it's funny, I, I laugh about it now, but at the time it did fucking suck because I, I look at 
Um, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about, about writing for Amazon or wherever you write at is that you can go back and read the reviews and see what people have said and see how it's changed their life in some kind of way, whether they relate, whether they've made changes. And I think that's a beautiful part of writing, you know? And so um, it did hurt at the time, but like the amount of people that I've been able to push to write their own books and just read what they've said, as far as what I've personally written, like that, I don't even worry about what they said anymore. Like I don't even worry about what my mother's friend has said, you know, when she said that people didn't care. Because clearly people do care. You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm glad that I didn't listen to people who were telling me that nobody would care, that nobody would relate to what I was writing about, that nobody would be inspired or motivated by it. I'm glad I was stubborn in those in those situations. I really am. Um, and as far as getting a real job, I hate that fucking word. I hate it. Yeah, I, I do. I hate it because I feel like I feel like it implies doubt. It implies that what your passions and what you're working on outside of your job will never work. And that's just what I get from it. So that's always going to sit wrong with me. I'm never going to be comfortable with somebody telling me to get a real job. Because um, in essence, I feel like your creativity is your real job. Like mm -hmm. working a nine to five to me is not your real job. That's what you That's do just to pay bills. You, 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 you just doing, just be doing because, you know, you right. scared of going broke for a while. So why are you building your dream? Right, exactly. And so I, I will always, and I hope somebody captions this, I really do, but I will always have a problem with people telling you that you should get a real job. I just, I, it doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't sit well with my spirit. Um, but how do you feel about those words of real job? And I quote, how do you feel about those words, bro? I mean, it's like, I do flip the job on his head and use it for your benefit instead of just getting sucked in. Cause a lot of people, unfortunately they go in with the intention of investing in a business, but inevitably they get sucked in all because they're not mentally or spiritually strong enough to resist the urge to just settle where they are. So for me, when I did work that conference assistant, a job, job, like I mentioned, when I worked at five below, when I worked at Hollister, my mind was focused on my dreams. I stayed locked in the whole time. Hell, let me tell you a story. So at the first job, sure. when I worked at Hollister, when I was in the back stocking clothes, I was listening to this book called Psycho Cybernetics while I was mm. stocking clothes. So really, <laughs> it's all in how you handle it. It's in your approach. You can either complain about being bored or you can listen to an audio book that inspires you while you're working that dead end job so you keep your vibration high and you surround yourself mm. with greatness. Because I watched the video by Evan Carmichael yesterday. It's like, you have to surround yourself with greatness. Even if you can't surround yourself with them physically, you can surround yourself with them through their books, through their um, yeah. webinars, um, their, what else they got? Interviews, and you just let that information coagulate inside of your brain so that you start yeah. keeping your high vibration. So really, it's on the person for getting sucked in. And, I'm, and I don't feel sorry for them, to be honest, David, because yeah. You know, for jobs that let you listen with your earbuds on while you're working, use that time to listen to something inspirational or a business book. Listen to something that really keeps you in that mode of focusing on your dream instead of paying attention to the workplace politics and the bullshit that goes on at um, your typical nine to five job. So really, it's all on the person, like I said, David. Right. Exactly man um i know for me it took some work it definitely took uh some work for me to get to this mindset of just generating wealth and wanting to leave something behind um it took some work you know because going back to what you was talking about um initially i didn't have a person to teach me about wealth i didn't have a person um, I just naturally became interested because I started seeing, going back to what you was talking about, people online. And um, 
and people that had really decided for themselves that they wanted to live a different life. So I started to seek that out on my own. It wasn't because I knew somebody in the family that did it. It wasn't because I knew somebody um, personally that had done it themselves. You know, it was just something that I just personally became attracted to. So I took the initial steps and started changing what I read and what I watch and, and the baby steps that they tell us about personal development. And so I definitely agree uh, with what you're saying. And I think one thing that people forget is that we all get the same 24 hours within a day. Your yes. 24 hours is not no yes. different from mine. It's not. Um, and so I think there's always time to make room for your dream, whatever your dream is, whether you write books, do film, whatever. There's always time within the day to devote to your craft, your dream, whatever you're trying to do. And I think that it just depends on how bad you want it. Some people are not, they, they talk like they want it. They talk like they want it, but some people just don't want it. Some people just, unfortunately, but some people just don't want it, you know? So I think like understanding that we all got the same 24 hours, it helps you use them more wisely. In my opinion, I was asking you that, you know, why do you continue to write and create? Um, I've become addicted to honesty. I've become addicted um, to really just expressing myself the way that I see fit. And when I'm writing, uh, when I'm doing podcasts, um, even down to my Facebook lives, nobody's on top of me about none of it. Um, I can decide for the day what I want to talk about throughout the day and not feeling like I have to um, sugarcoat my message, you know, not feeling like I have to shy away from a certain message that I want to deliver. Um, and just accepting that I just, I, I love the truth. I, I do. I'm addicted to people that, not that they're malicious about it, but I'm addicted to people that are just honest, that are just flat out honest in whatever they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I just, I love podcasting. I love books. I love um, writing and just in general, you know, because that allows me to cuss if I want to. I don't have to feel bad for cussing. I, I don't have mm -hmm. to feel like someone's going to make me feel, feel bad for saying fuck this person or fuck that job or fuck this and fuck that. <laughs> and like, I can, you know what I mean? Like I can just, I can be my authentic self and I'm addicted to being my authentic self and podcasting and books allow me to be strictly that. And I can use my, um, any lessons that I've learned along the way to make it easier for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So that's, Money is not a factor when it comes to that. I don't do it for money. Um, I don't do it for money. Um, it's just purely passion. That, that's just, and the money comes later. You know what I mean? So I, I, that's really my answer in a nutshell. I just love being honest and just love telling my truth. And I feel like I have to run it by somebody else. Yeah, and like, you know, just segue off of that, you know, I don't know if you know this about me or if you've dug deep enough on my pages or even because I have a lot of posts so that you're going to be doing a lot of digging. But so just take the time. Uh, when I first started my creative journey, I originally just wanted to be an actor. Like that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to podcast. I didn't want to do audio books or voiceover. I didn't want to do filmmaking. I know you. I know you surprised to hear that because I'm. You know me from <laughs> from like uploading my short films on Facebook, but originally I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to act, and I think a subconscious reason of why I wanted to act was because you know I felt like if I hid behind the character and said what I really wanted to say, then people wouldn't criticize yeah. me. They'll criticize the character, and so that was just my intellect just kicking in and saying hmm how can you express yourself without being chastised yourself just hide behind the character and you'll be fine 
But over time, I realized, like, fuck that shit. I, I shouldn't just feel free when I'm creating. I should feel free regardless, period. And so, you know, I wanted to take that approach, like you said. It's like with you, it was writing. With me, it was filmmaking and acting. And some writing, too, because I am a screenwriter as well. But, you know, overall, I've just been learning to embrace my, me, myself just for my own mm -hmm. sake instead of waiting on my family members to love my authenticity and you and um, uh, Anna Brooks and anybody else. Like, I, I mean, I appreciate the love that I get from my posts and I appreciate people buying that did mm -hmm. buy my merch and that did, you know, buy anything from me. But at the same time, I don't need you to love me. I don't need your loving to feel complete right. because I'm already whole within myself, like the yin and yang. And so the thing is, we have to learn to embrace ourselves. And it's like Malcolm X talked about, you know, we have to stop waiting on them to accept us and integrating um, us with them. And we should just do our own thing in peace. And whoever loves us and whoever is right for us will come into our field. I no longer chase clients. I no longer chase friends. I no longer chase fans because I know that my niche is in me being me. And as long as I'm being me, I'll attract the right people to me. Like with you, like with Anna, like Goddess on Deck, like my significant other, like Michelle Johnson, like Heather. I know I'm name dropping people. I'm technically not supposed to do that, but I don't care. I'm going to name drop you if I like you. Right. And if I don't like you, I'll just keep my mouth shut because I don't like bringing out negativity. I have beef with nobody. You know, even if I do have a problem with you, I'm not going to take it on social media like some of these rappers like to do. They like to get on Twitter and they like to get on Instagram Live and just start talking bullshit. That's not me. Any Anytime that I like to speak, because I know I have a big mouth, I like to speak positivity into myself and into other people. I don't like to cause drama or to manufacture beef or to, you know, just create chaos out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? It's like the paradox with me is it's like, or at least what I found like you found and like everybody else has found that has learned to love themselves 100% is that once you stop yeah, chasing, up, Miguel? once they stop chasing love and validation from other people and they started embracing themselves and loving themselves they attract the right clients they attract the amount of income they want they attract the right type of people who are in their same vibration and so yeah. nothing comes into our reality without us inviting it in first so you know i you couldn't me and you wouldn't wouldn't have shown up in each other's realities even though we just met digitally we still attracted each other because we emitted a similar frequency. And it's just like, yeah. you know, I'm going to just say this for my Houston piece. If you live in Houston, I want you to throw your H's up like this if you're watching it. But anyways, if you tune into 97.9 The Box, you're going to get hip hop and R&B. If you want to listen to jazz, you better go on like 102.1. I think that's what it is. I think that's radio station. But even if it's not the metaphor is still the same. Like, if you want jazz music, tune into 102.1, not 97.9 The Box. So you need to tune into the right frequencies in order to get a clear signal of what you want. Just the same thing with prosperity. If you want mm -hmm. to tune into prosperity consciousness, you need to surround yourself with people who are on a prosperous state of mind. You can't be listening right. to your negative ass family members talking about, oh, I'm broke as hell, man. I don't like work. I don't like my job. And I've written about this in this book, in my book, yeah. Confessions of a Divine Masculine. So I'm giving you this one freebie. You ain't getting nothing else. I've written in there that I've observed that my family members were, you know, I witnessed them having these parties with their friends, going to Mardi Gras. And yet, when they're by themselves, I would hear them bicker about their jobs every time I ask them, like, how was work? And my mom would be like, oh, work sucks balls. And, you know, and they'll tell, they'll vent to me and their other family members about workplace drama. Keep in mind, I'm like four or five years mm -hmm. old at the time. And they're having a conversation with me about how crappy their job is. And I'm just sitting there like, uh, I, I, I don't yeah. know what the hell is going on. But yet, 
they seem to make time to go to parties and kickbacks and all this stuff. I know it seems like I'm spilling the beans right now and I'm putting <laughs> stuff out the air, but I'm, I'm just keeping it real with you and everybody else. I mean, and, yeah, and man, I, I definitely um, relate like, to what you're saying so, as far right? as like um, just changing your frequency, man. I, I really do, you know, and I was just having a conversation with, um, with my girlfriend about this i was just having a conversation like um and i really had to pause the other day and think about this i had been saying for a while that i wanted friends that have their own businesses right that that's it was just as simple as that and it's funny because now everybody that i'm affiliated with has their own business now which I think is an amazing feeling. Everybody has a media company. You have your film company. Somebody else has another media company. Somebody else is um, in network marketing or whatever. And I think that it's an amazing feeling when you realize the people that you're uh, surrounded with are sharpening your iron the, the way that you're sharpening their iron. You know, nobody's outdoing each other. Nobody is doing better than the other. Everybody is in the same race, even though we are doing different businesses. And I think that that's um, a beautiful thing when it comes to the law of attraction and the law of intention and just making your intentions as clear as they could be. I think that's a beautiful thing. I really do. And it, was, it wasn't something that I had realized until um, I took a break. And I don't take many breaks because I'm like a workaholic when it comes to my stuff. So I don't take many breaks, but I took a break and I realized that almost everybody that I'm affiliated with now has some type of business that they own or that they're in, you know what I'm saying? And it's, sometimes it happens so seamlessly that you don't even realize it's happened. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, um, Sometimes I cry like a baby because of it. I'm not going to hold you. I do. Sometimes I cry like a fucking baby because I want, me personally, I wanted that. I wanted people that um, even if we did had separate businesses, we were all in the realm of having our own, having yeah, our own business. Having something you can claim as your own. Life. You know what I'm saying? Put and, and my t-shirt that I'm wearing. I'm repping <laughs> Absolutely, bro. Absolutely, man. You know, and so I'm just, I'm taking advice of a few friends and I'm just enjoying the company that I now keep, which is people that have their own businesses now, because at one point that was foreign to me that, you know, I, I didn't think that I would have um, somebody like you who has their own film company now, somebody else that has a media company and um, somebody else that has their own publishing company now. And all of these things that have happened because I made my intentions as clear as I could possibly fucking make. The only th other thing I could do is write it on, at, on the side of the road in chalk. And that's the only other thing that I could do because I love the people that I'm connected with now. And I think that it's a beautiful feeling when you realize that um, the people that you're connected with are not competing with you they want what you want but they're not competing with you they they are content with what they're doing just like you're content with what you're doing you know what i'm saying and i think um that's been my personal lesson is just enjoying the process you know because i always felt like i had a finite amount of time but in reality i really don't i have all the time that i need so i've kind of shifted that and I've kind of stepped away from being in a rush all the time and just learning to just be and just be in the moment and not feeling like if I don't get to a certain place by 50, then I'm just not successful. You know what I'm saying? And that's really what the law of attraction has taught me is to just enjoy the process and just be grateful for who's with me now. You know what I'm saying? So to be among friends that where everyone is a founder, I think that's to me, I think that's awesome. Me personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, before I'm going to get back to what I'm saying about 
you know, what I just mentioned. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like in all seriousness, though, that's something that I've been struggling with for a long time is learning to learning that I am enough just with me, myself. What I do or don't do doesn't define me. And, you know, and lockdown has really bought, again, bought up that insecurity that I had about feeling like, damn, like, I don't want this quarantine to be over and have nothing to show for us. Like, dude, you're already ahead of most people in your age group. Like, I'm only 22 years old, believe it or not. But, you know, it's just like, I felt like, man, you know, if I'm not at a certain income, then I ain't doing shit. <laughs> and that was just programming that was passed down from my family members that if you don't have you ain't got no job and you ain't making steady income then you ain't shit. But segue back to what I was saying, you know, <laughs> before you awesomely interrupted me, which was very awesome by the way. Um, it's like I noticed that they were going to parties and kickbacks celebrating and I'm just like, Well, weren't y'all just complaining like five minutes ago about how much your job sucks? And now you're sitting around watching the NBA or the NFL or PlayStation 2 partying, playing um, right foot stump, left foot stump, and you cha-cha with your right. I, I ain't going to sing the whole song because of this live. But like, you're hitting that damn cha-cha slide while drinking Heineken. And, and you know, you celebrating with a kickback drinking Heineken one day and you go back and complain at work the next day. I'm like, what exactly are you celebrating, my guy? Like, yo, what's going exactly. on here? <laughs> I'm like, uh -uh. I, 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 I knew, I knew as I got older that I had to break free from that mindset of lack and limitation, and just embrace that entrepreneurial spirit. Like, ever since I was little, I've always had, you know a business type of mindset. I've always wanted to start my own business. And I've been inspired, believe it or not, by, you know, by um, Batman. When he called his company Wayne Enterprises, I was originally calling my company Youngblood Enterprises just because I was inspired by Batman because he's the most relatable superhero, in my opinion, because he has trauma that he's dealt with and he's turned his fear into power and he's using it to help assist other people. And that's why I rock with, you know, Batman like I do. I do. I like Spider-Man. I like Spider-Man because of his bubbly personality. And I like Batman because he's more logical and he's more grounded in reality. So it's like the yin and the yang right there. It's like Spider-Man yeah. is, you know, the playful inner child that loves to play, that loves to express himself. And Batman is more of like, the grown adult that's like logical that solves problems and gets down to business so i i've been learning to integrate both of those i'm not saying that i've i've like mastered it but i've gotten a lot better over the years and balancing the two out yeah um yeah because i am into comic books my, myself um i love comic books and I identify with Superman because I feel like Superman is what everybody has the potential to be. I feel like Superman is is, is um, the potential of everybody once they figure out what they are, what they're capable of, you know, and they don't have any restrictions on what they're doing. I feel like that's Superman, um, and I do identify with Batman because because he's distrusting of everybody, you know, and he's had tragic events happen to him. Um, so I do identify definitely with both. Um, I do identify with Spider-Man as well, because uh, Spider-Man made it cool to not be to not be the sidekick as a teenager. And that's what I ident identify with Spider-Man about. You know, he made it cool that, like, no, you don't have to be somebody else's sidekick, you could be you could be your own superhero. You don't necessarily have to just be the sideshow for somebody else. So that's what I take away from the whole Spider Man concept of him being bit by a spider and, and getting all of these crazy powers. I that's what I take from him is he's comfortable with working on his own as well as a team. And I, I, I 
definitely could identify with people who could do both, you know, because oh, someone said they identify yeah. with Storm and Dark Queen. That's a cool. Com- that's a cool um, combination. I did that. Um, I'm trying to think of any more questions. Um, so, do you have plans on writing another book? Because I know you've written one already. Congrats, by the way. Welcome to the world of authorship. Um, yeah, you have man, I, I, it, it's book? a whole different ball game. Like I've, I've always had an, I've always like wanted. I've always entertained the idea of writing books, but I can never get myself to like commit to actually like finishing a book. And I do, I just don't know what I'm going to write next. See, that's the thing about me is that I don't plan on what I'm going to create. It's more of like a spur in the moment thing. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I don't, I don't like try to force ideas. Like I don't force myself to write. If I feel inspired to write something, if it's like a hell yes, create that, then I'm gonna go ahead, open up my laptop, fire up uh, Microsoft Word, I'm gonna start typing. Or if it's a movie idea that I feel fired up about and I absolutely cannot stop thinking about, then I'll open up Fade In and start writing my screenplay. So really, like my best creations come from when I'm, like, <clears throat> when I'm like in the zone and it's divinely inspired, rather than just going by conventionalism, like. Oh, you got to write every day for an hour. Um, to be honest, David, if I'm not feeling it, it's not going to be good. So right. I don't try to force myself to create mm-hmm. anything. It's more of like what my higher self is calling me to do personally. And then I create from that place. And I know when I create from that place, that's when the magic happens. That's yeah. like real magical creativity. And so my advice for anybody that wants to get into the arts, like, writing screenplays, novels, biographies, um, nonfiction books, and, you know, making videos and doing podcast episodes. Trust your intuition. Don't try to force yourself to create something. Right. Just let it flow. Let it happen. Don't force it. Because if you try to force it, the mm-hmm. product is not going to be as high quality as it can be. So just focus on focusing on those ideas that you feel really, really passionate about. They're just going out there, I just like, mm, you know, that, that sounds yeah. like an okay idea. I'll, I'll just stick with that. Like, no, choose something that rocks your freaking world. Cause chances are, if it doesn't make you like, let's say you make music. If your own song doesn't make you bob your head like this and make this thing face like, mm, and you bob your head yeah. like this, then you don't need to drop it. And you know, and like when I like when I listen yeah. to music that I like, I'm bobbing my head, man, making facial expressions. I'm moving my hands. I'm moving with the instrumental. I'm even freestyling mentally on the instrumental. If it doesn't give me that feeling, if a creation of mine doesn't make me feel like that, then I know that it's going to be mediocre and it's going to be, it's just going to be plain and dry and just ew, disgusting. So. <laughs> yeah, I do have another one in the works, but I'm like I said, I'm not going to force it. It's going to come yeah. to me when it comes to me. And in due time, I'll drop that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean I mean I definitely share that, bro. I really do. Um that's not actually why I've given up on putting a number on how many books I'm going to write. I've given up on putting a finite number on it. You know what I'm saying? Like um, if I get to 10, then I get to 10. If I get to 7, then I get to 7. You know what I'm saying? And I realized um, subconsciously I was limiting myself by putting a number on it. Because at, at one point, I had said that I was going to get to 10, and then I was going to focus on something else. But then what happens when people like how you're writing, so they want you to continue? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I've given up on this idea of just limiting myself and just saying, all right, whatever comes that I feel I'm drawn to, that's what I'll write and that's what I'll work on, whatever comes. But I'm not putting a number on it, you know, and I and I feel like it's more fun when you don't know um, how many projects you're going to be doing. It's more fun like that. I feel like 
yeah. when you try to put a limit on um, how much content you're going to put out, I think that's when it becomes boring. Because now you're expecting, you're expecting at a certain time or within a certain couple of years that you're going to be done. You're officially going to be done. So by the time you're 30, you're going to be finished at 30 because you've put a limit on your creativity now. And I think that's when people start to kind of fizzle out and that's when people start to get bored because now you've put a limit that wasn't there in the beginning. It wasn't there at all. <laughs> Nobody came and said that you should get to 10 books or five videos and, and, and be done with it. So you've put a limit on yourself so you self-sabotage now because now you instead of just working until you can't anymore, now you have a limit. And now, once you get to 10, you're upset that you don't have any more ideas. You don't have any more create, creative juices to flow. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely agree with just, just flowing with it and just going with the flow about it. And whatever comes, that's what comes. So I definitely, I share that sentiment, bro. Like, I, I really do. I share that. Um, it was something that I had to break. It definitely was, but it's so much to me. It's so much more fun, like when you're not limiting it. To me, it's just more fun yes. that way. Yeah, and it's like that's also with any. I also want to speak on this too, David, about like business among creativity. Is that you know you don't buy a product or a service because it's top quality. That's part of the reason. Don't get me wrong. Your your products and services need to be of the top the most top tier quality you can get it but that's not the reason why we buy products and services because there's lots of people who have high quality products and services that are not selling as much as they can all because you know you're not giving the customer a great experience it's all about the experience that's why we listen to music that's why we write books that's why we make music that's why we do anything period or purchase anything period is for the experience itself not because we're looking to gain a profit. And if we would just for a moment stop looking at creativity from the business perspective and just making profit, profit is important. You need to monetize your passion. But at the same time, you shouldn't let money, you shouldn't have to choose between being money and being able to freely um, be yourself and express yourself creatively because we've seen like in a lot of interviews where artists would say when they get asked like, hey, how did you become so successful and sold all them records? And they were just like, well, we were just in the studio all night just writing songs and a melody just came to me out of nowhere. And so I went in the booth and recorded it. And then, you know, I recorded my verses and then we just had this momentum. And I remember watching this documentary called The Defiant Ones with Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre. And, you know, Dr. Dre was at a dry spell in his career between like 97 and 98 and he was releasing music, but people weren't really feeling it. And then, you know, he discovered one of Eminem's tapes. So they were in a similar place because like Eminem was, you know, trying to catch his big break and Dr. Dre was trying to get back to his position and being a mainstream star. So they really took a chance on each other. And Jimmy Iovine was telling Dre, like, no, no, do not, do not hire him. Do not hire Eminem because he's saying all this off-the-wall stuff and he's too controversial. But Dr. Dre's gut told him, like, sign Eminem, work with Eminem. And one day they were just working on a song, My Name Is, and, you know, Eminem was, like, humming the hook or whatever. And I think Dre says, you need to go in there, go in that booth and record it now, and we need to keep up this momentum while we have it. And before you know it, Eminem's career takes off, Dr. Dre's career resurges, all because they took a chance on each other and they followed that flow instead of trying to be all rigid. And so that's like one of the lessons I took from watching that episode. Exactly, exactly. And you know what, I, I think that, because um, I'm guilty of doing this my, my damn self, but I think another thing that we need to get away from is wanting to work our way up to a certain celebrity. I think that we need to get away from that. I feel like, and I'm guilty of it too, because I've done it. Um, I feel like if you're just your authentic self, 
that you'll meet the right celebrities, you'll meet the right people, you'll meet the right um, people that can elevate what you're doing, whether that's film, business, acting, whatever you do. I feel like we need to get away from wanting to do things because we want to meet a certain celebrity. You know, you might get into music because you want to meet 50 Cent. You might get into writing because you want to meet Greg Cardone or something like that. You know, and I feel like, um, and this is something that I've learned from people, that I feel like if you're just your authentic self and you're just being genuine about your message, then the people that are meant to hear your message will gravitate towards your message. Like, I think that's something that we need to kind of step away from and just be ourselves. Um, Because I feel like some of us, we chase that. We chase wanting to meet certain celebrities. And sometimes the celebrities may not be able to meet us that day when we want to meet them. So I feel like that's something that a lot of us need to get away from. Myself included, because I do it too. I have my dream list of, of certain people that I'm looking to meet throughout life. And, but, but I feel like if I continue to write books, if I continue to do my mm-hmm. podcast, I'll put out the message enough times so that way the right people in those arenas will gravitate towards what I'm talking about instead of just pursuing them. Like, instead of feeling like I'm always on this constant chase to meet Steve Harvey, to meet Jay-Z, or whoever. I'm, so instead of chasing, I've just decided to just be, you know, and whoever is meant to cross my path, if it's meant you know, us to do business in some kind of way, then it will happen. But I'm stepping away from like chasing a celebrity. Like I gotta write twenty books to meet Steve Harvey. I gotta write three thousand books to meet this person or that person. Like I'm me personally I'm just stepping away. I'm just stepping away from wanting to chase celebrities. But that's just my opinion on it. Like, do you agree? Do you disagree? Like how do you feel about hey, that? Like, hey, I totally agree, man. Like you def- definitely hit on a lot of great points because a lot of people get into business and um, in the arts for the wrong reasons. And I want to also speak on entrepreneurship too, while we're on this call right now, is that if you, you know, you've seen, you've seen all these advertisements on YouTube and all other social media platforms of them advertising entrepreneurship, like we just party and bullshitting all day on a yacht, you know, taking these amazing trips. Now, that is a part of it once you get the business side right. But what they don't show you is the day-to-day grind that it takes in building your business. They just show the glamour side of it. And I, and I said this too, that entrepreneurship is the new rap career. And I say that because, you know, they're marketing these advertisements like music videos back in the 2000s of rappers wearing gold chains, gold teeth, gold watches, gold rings, all gold, everything, or platinum popping Chris style and you you seen the music videos back in the 2000s man you grew up in the 2000s but anyways like they market entrepreneurship like it's this all glamorous it's all glamorous all day every day we can attest that it's not it's a day to day slow but sure grind and there are some days where I'm just like man am I, am I doing the right thing is this going to take yeah. off? Like, I, I just don't know if this business thing going to work out. Like, I have those thoughts. And it's normal to have those thoughts as an entrepreneur. Don't let all of these so-called influencers and gurus on these ads convince you that you're going to make, like, $100,000 in 30 days from drop shipping. Because you knew damn well it took you longer than 30 days to make your first 100 k Because when you're just figuring stuff out, you don't know what the hell you're doing. You're just figuring stuff out as you go. And that's in essence with anything in life is that you're figuring shit out as you go. Like with yeah. social media and building my media company and doing podcasting, doing YouTube. I, I'm not like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Sure, I know how to use a camera. Sure, I know how to edit. Sure, I know how to take bomb ass photos. But at the same time, I don't know what I'm doing in regards to business. I'm figuring this out as I go. And I'm just keeping it real with you and everybody else that's watching this live on a replay who will be listening to this after we, you know, drop it on other platforms. 
I don't know what the hell I'm doing when it comes to this business stuff. Mm. You know, it's it's like it's just like with learning anything, it's like learning a sport. Like when you're first dribbling a basketball, you're just doing this. You patting it with your hand. You're trying to <laughs> dribble in between the legs and the ball is going out of bounds and you try to shoot it and the ball goes way left or way right or you clunk it or you just airball that joint. But it's all a part of the learning process. It's going to be awkward at first. Like when you was a baby and you learned to walk for the first time, you got up, you walked two steps, you fell. And you try to get back up, you fall again. And you kept persisting, persisting, persisting until you was able to walk with no problems. And so that's what, you know, it's like, that's what building a business is like. And I think that's the reason why most people don't take a chance on at least trying entrepreneurship. I'm not saying you have to be an entrepreneur to be prosperous because there's plenty of people who work nine to five jobs that they absolutely love and they're crushing it. They're living their best lives. All the more power to you if you work a nine to five and you love your job. But when you're building a business, that is a whole different beast. You're not, you don't have the security of a paycheck every week or every two weeks. There is no such thing as that. There is no such thing as getting good benefits because all of that stuff, the income, the influence, the power, all of that comes later on after you master yourself and you master the world of business. Right. Do you agree with that? Wait, can you read some of the comments? Exactly. Um, exactly, Katia. I do agree with being authentic um, in business because I feel like if you're authentic with your message, then nobody can come and use it against you later. So I'd rather tell you the truth myself rather than somebody else that doesn't know you or me like that come along and try and convince you on why you shouldn't work with me or this person or that person. So I'd rather just tell you the truth myself. So I definitely agree with being authentic in business, um, I do. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, so in regards of what I had to say, like, do you agree with it, disagree, or are you like a tweener when it comes to that? All right, so we've got like 20 minutes because I know that, um, unfortunately, Instagram cuts it up after an hour. Um, and I know it's been going on like two hours. Well, it's, two, it's been like two hours. <laughs> um, I know you probably got other things that you need to do. So did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about or ask? Like, Because we've got like 20 minutes. Like, we've got some time left. Yeah. You know, I, was I feel just like we covered the basics of, well, not the basics, but like we covered like the main topic plus extra topics, which is freedom and um, and being passionate about what we do. Um, so do you have anything else that you wanted to add or ask me? Or Like I said, this is not even an interview. It's more a conversation. This is more, kind of, more of a convo. So do you have anything yeah. else that you wanted to ask me or anything? Yeah, I also want to speak on the fact that, you know, of you know us taking the route less traveled and that's what freedom is all about freedom is dangerous by nature because it requires you to be responsible for yourself and i think that's why subconsciously a lot of people are afraid to leave that nine to five nest egg because it's so comfortable and familiar and you know it's predictable and people are lulled to sleep by a paycheck every two weeks and they're just thinking like logically, like, why would I want to give something up that's paying, that gives me predictable income? It may not be the most, but at least it's predictable. But what that really says is, is that you're letting fear talk because fear often disguises itself as logic. And, you know, a lot of us are not ballsy enough to go ahead and pursue our dreams. Like with me, like I've spent three years of my life in college, although deep down I knew I didn't want to be there and I wanted to focus all on my business 
and on creating movies, but I was scared to leave because I was, I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to let my family down. But in the process, I wound up letting myself down for a while. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to drop out of college and follow my dreams. And yes, I did get chewed out. I did get yelled at. You know, they told me I was unreasonable and this and that and the third. But I didn't, I knew deep down in my soul, I didn't want to get in any more debt. I didn't want to keep living. I didn't want to keep living somebody else's dream. I wanted to live my own dream and follow my own path. And so I just like took the merit in creating my own life and doing what is necessary for me to advance instead of um, says it's really not comfortable though. A lot of people find that in this pandemic. So like, did you hear the gist of what I said, you know, before, you know, the signal got all wonky? Yeah. Yeah, you were talking about um, the importance of like, even though a nine to five is cool, like having options um, and ha traveling the road less traveled. Um, which I do agree with, you know, I think, um, I think nine to fives are not bad, you know, depending on the nine to five, because I feel like medical, medical, medical workers are needed. Yes. They're definitely needed. So some nine to fives are mandatory. Um, so not all nine to fives are bad. However, I do think that it's important to have options, um, I do think it's important to set yourself up with options, whether you have a nine to five and you're looking at other ways to make money or you are a full time entrepreneur like us. I think it's important to have options. Um, so some nine to fives are mandatory, like medical workers and um, like doctors and those type of jobs. Those are mandatory. But I do feel like if you can kind of strike out on your own, you should at least take a chance and strike out on your own if you can, you know. Um, and I also disagree with having a plan B. I feel like it distracts from plan A, you know, because if you... Thank you, Kim. Um, but... I guess it's probably because of the volume on your phone. And still here. Oh yeah, I can. We can hear you loud and clear now. Am I good now? Okay. You Gucci. All right. Um, I was I was kind of finishing where you left off with, uh, having a nine to five job, and I felt like certain ones are mandatory. But I also feel it's important to have options. So whether you use your nine to five to invest in the stock market, whether you use it to invest in cryptocurrency, whether you have books that you're writing on the side or you're getting into film or whatever you're doing outside of your job, I feel like is important. You know, I, I feel I, I don't think that, especially with this pandemic, um, I think that a lot of people, unfortunately, um, 
got a wake up call with this pandemic. And so I feel like having options is like super duper, super important. Um, some might disagree with that. I don't know, but I, I do feel like it's important to have options, you know, and I think that's one of the lessons that this has taught everybody, you know, about the not whole nine to five grind and things like that is the importance of options because at any time your job, unfortunately can be taken. It can be taken yeah. from you, whether it's downsizing of a company, whether somebody is faster or stronger or smarter than you are, your job is always at risk from somebody, you know, whether, whether they decide we like what you're doing, but we're downsizing. Now you don't have a job. So what are you going to do now? Are you going to rely on your creative gifts or are you going to go find another job? You know, so I think to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying, bro, I think it's important to have options when it comes to like the whole nine to five grind. In my opinion, I might be wrong, but in my opinion, it's important to have options. Yes, yes, man, definitely. Cause like, you know, that's what it's forced me to do too. Cause while I was like training for like a trade, the center mm -hmm. got shut down since March and then they're delaying it for another month. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to rely on me and my business at this point. I'm not going to worry about them. I'm worried about <laughs> me getting my shit together because it seemed like y'all taking forever. So I'm just going <laughs> to be working on myself and my businesses because that's what's making me some money anyways, you know. Yeah. Not, like I said, I've been selling some old stuff I don't use anymore on Mercari and um, selling my own merch, you know, which is by the way, guys, if if you're mm -hmm. wondering, you know, since you bought my merch, I'm on a new platform now called Redbubble. I no longer use Spreadshirt because it's like the website it, itself is not as optimized and user-friendly as Redbubble. And so I'm on that platform now. So if you're interested in getting merch from me, the link is in the bio along with my links to all my social media, YouTube channels, all that, all on Linktree. So I'm not going to bombard you with a bunch of links. It's all in one place. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's like you have to have multiple hustles. Like, you know, I'm selling books and I have an audio yep. book that I'm going to be dropping soon after I mix and master all of the rest of my chapters. And then I sell merch. I have a YouTube channel. Um, of course, I have my video and photography services. I have a client that I'm doing a virtual photo shoot with tomorrow through the phone. And so for all you photographers that are watching this, you can still make money with photography doing virtual photo shoots through the phone. So get in on it nope. while you can. So just wanted to put that out and there. <laughs> no, nah, listen, listen, don't be ashamed. Promote your shit, man. Ain't nobody going to do it for you, so promote your shit. Um, but I do have a question because I do want to, um, I do want to record my own audio book for my past, for my previous book that I just did, um, which is a powerful message in it. And I wanted to, uh, I want to do it myself. I, I want to kind of challenge myself and do it myself. I've always, um, I know Amazon has the whole ACX thing where you could find yeah, somebody else to do it. Um, but I, I want to do it myself. So is there a way for me to do that? Like, how would I go about doing that? Because that, okay. that is something that is my book. Can do it. Like, um, you know, with you, yeah. like, I don't know what your budget is right now, but I would say at least invest in a USB mic. Like, you can find one for, like, $40 on Amazon, but make sure you get you a mic stand and a pop filter and you record in the quietest room you can find in your house. With me, I happen to own the XLR mic where I, I plug it into the audio interface and then plug in the interface to my computer. But if you don't have the budget, obviously, to use like a, a condenser mic that requires an XLR connection and an audio interface, then you mm -hmm. can just get you a USB mic, put that put the mic on the mic stand, plug it in, download Audacity. If you have a PC 
or if you have a Mac, you can download GarageBand, but you can still download Audacity and record on there. And just find the quietest space. So really, it's not about the mic. It's all about your space and how much you can eliminate the noise, you know? So like, you have to be careful the background noise that that is in your room. You have to pay attention to that. I would invest in some budget st stereo headphones. Okay. So, and then, okay, so, um, and I, I was wondering if you could send me, um, is there a link for Audacity? Is there like a link or do I look it up on a computer? I'll send you the link to the website just so you want to search it up yourself, but it's free software that you can record, mix, and master on. I haven't used it, but that is like the most popular free option if you're on a budget, if you can't afford something like Logic Pro X, Pro Tools, um, FL Studio, Adobe Audition, which I have used all of the above, like I mentioned, GarageBand, FL Studio, Audition, and Logic. I haven't used Pro Tools yet. But I do want to, you know, use that. But mm -hmm. like I said, man, if you if you can only use a free option, just rock with that. Don't let nothing stop you. I know that, you know, Frank that's in, mm -hmm. you know, the acting business. He's a voice actor. He records in Audacity, even though he has like a fully treated studio with like the sure podcasting mics. You know those mics Gary V uses? Yeah. Yeah. That's what he uses. He uses that mic, but he records in a free program. So there's a lot of voiceover artists and narrators that record on Audacity. So that's a couple of options. And I will also look up the requirements on ACX just to see exactly how they want it. And they do have some strict requirements, which I've been trying my best to get my audio to meet those requirements so that when I upload it, yeah. I'll be able to put my audio book up for sale. So as far as like advice, man, you don't have to shell out a chunk of change just to get started, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause I, 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 um, like I told you, I had used them for my, my first uh, two books cause I'm on my fourth now and I used them for my first two books. And then I did a, um, I think I researched Google or I researched um, Audible on YouTube or something. I forget what I researched. But people who do their own audiobooks make more money. So I immediately regretted my decision of finding somebody else to do it because now I'm getting less money because I found somebody else to do it. So... Yeah, I mean, if I if I could if I could do it myself, I'd rather do it myself. So, and it's something that I've been wanting to do. I just wasn't sure um, of the direction. You know, I wasn't sure of the direction that I had to go in in order to do that, because I know that there's a thousand different ways that you could do it. So, yeah. So I'm glad I'm glad that we had this conversation about it, bro. I really am, because it's been on my uh, to-do list to get that done, and it really has, so I'm glad that we had this conversation about it, because I've been wanting to do my own audiobook my damn self, so I'm glad that you have experience in that arena, so now I have somebody that I could go to and nitpick and bug and ask questions, because I didn't know nobody else, um, so I definitely appreciate your uh, tips, man, I do, I much appreciate it. Just, just a little bit. I'm a beginner when it comes to this audiobook stuff. Yes, I've done the podcasting on my own equipment, but I'm a, I'm a newbie when it comes to voiceover and narration. So, like I said, I'm just learning as I go about, like, how to edit audio and audio engineering. So that's a new skill that I'm working on right now is audio recording, editing, mixing, and mastering, all of that good stuff so that I can have another skill set because believe it or not, editing audio is harder than editing videos because mm. you really have to have an attuned ear to hear, hear the little frequencies in your audio recording and that's why audio engineers get paid so much because that's like a rare skill that most people don't have. Yeah. Yeah. 
You better monetize the fuck out that skill. You better monetize oh, it. Yeah. You've already started. <laughs> hey, look. I'll get it how I live, man. That that if if it can help me move my business forward and add more value, I'm doing it. I'm game. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely, man. Um, how much time we got left? We got like six minutes left. Cause it usually gives you a countdown, like once you um yeah. Once you get close to the one hour mark, it starts to like count down like 30 seconds. Um, yeah, man, I think we've covered a lot, bro. Um, all right, so just to recap, so we've talked about freedom. We've talked about telling jobs to go fuck themselves. No, I'm just playing. Um, uh, we've talked about freedom. We've talked about honesty and passions. I think we've covered a lot. Um, yeah. We covered a lot in this short period of time, like entrepreneurship. Yes. Creativity. But see, that's what happens when you flow with people, man. I swear to God, because it'll be two hours in and you won't even have no fucking idea. And I think that's like the beauty of it. Like you just flow with people, like especially when you find people that are like minded, like you just flow with people, man. So I think it's beautiful. I do. Yeah, we have some stragglers hopping in last minute. I'm like, damn, y'all miss out on a little fun, man. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Look, listen, man, y'all got to go back and watch two hours worth of shit that we talked about because we are not explaining all of the shit that we talked about, bro. I got to go back damn, and watch. Bro. That's way too much. <laughs> six minutes. Like, you're going to have to go back and watch the first take. So you're going to have to watch the next take. Yeah. So, <laughs> we talked a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, this is this might be new to y'all, but this is not new to me because I've had conversations with this brother for a couple of times, and it's always, always dope conversation, man. So I'm glad that y'all was able to kind of catch a glimpse of what we was talking about, because um, like I said, we did one on my audio podcast a while ago that he invited me onto, and that one was dope. So I just wanted to continue where we had left off with that. So I'm glad we were able to kind of catch each other, um, even if just for a moment. I'm glad we were able to kind of catch each other and do another one. So I'm hoping that more conversations like this manifest themselves at some point, whether it's in a year, however, whenever it's meant to happen. I'm hoping that more conversations like this happen because this was dope. I I I had fun. I agree, man. And one of your followers named Tell 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 oh, Quapa, Quapa. He's he's asking he's asking how do we meet? We met through Facebook. And yeah, I think it was like uh, a group that Jonathan Martinez had, and you were in it, and I was in it. And I think yeah, how because I had, I had like this really crazy ago. idea. I wanted to rent a tour bus and have everybody on the tour <laughs> bus. And I thought that, that would be dope to crap to travel across country on a tour bus and everybody that has some kind of creative talent um would show off their talent. So whoever did video, photography, books, whatever you did, um and then that's how me and, and Evan just kind of connected from there because he thought I was crazy and out of my fucking mind when I wanted to run the tour bus and go across country. And he was like, bro, who does that? Like, I was like, listen, I just, I think like that all the time. I just don't tell everybody, but I think like that all the time. Um, but that's how we met. We met in a group. Um, we met in a group and I, and I really connected with some of the people in the group. Um, Heather is another one that we met in the group. Um, Michelle is another one. So um, I don't know what happened to everybody else, but those are really the main like three people that I've connected with from the group uh, and that I stay in contact with to this day. But yeah, we met on Facebook. We met through Facebook. Yeah, and you know, some people fizzled out, man, it happens. You know, yeah. people aren't going to grow with you. So you just have to, you know, get it how you live and just keep just keep trucking. 